So again, welcome everybody. Um, this title is more or less a working title. So uh, what I would like to do in the next 12 minutes is give you a short introduction um, on the work that we're doing and on the challenges that we're facing. And I would like to start with a short motivation. <clears throat> like the questions that I constantly hear about V2V communications is uh, what is the data rate that you guys can actually achieve uh, doing V2V communications? And uh, another question is what is the packet loss and what is the delay that uh, we will have to deal with? And I mostly hear these questions from people that design uh, applications for V2V, that, that actually use V2V communications. So another question here is how long can two vehicles directly communicate with each other? And uh, most important, how reliable is V2V communications? <clears throat> Now, as with all big questions in life, these are not easy to answer, and they depend on a lot of things. And the most influencing factors here is, uh, first of all, of course, the radio technology that you choose. <clears throat> and it has something to do with the radio environment um, that may contain buildings, other vehicles, uh, radio obstacles, so to say. And obviously, the spatial distribution of vehicles within this environment, within this playground, plays a big role um, the velocity profile of vehicles, and uh, we will, I will combine these, these two points here and just call it connectivity. Now, what is connectivity? Well, we say that two vehicles are connected if they are able to exchange information wirelessly with each other. <clears throat> and um, in this talk, I will assume that these, these vehicles are connected in an, in an ad hoc way, so there is no further infrastructure involved. Uh, these vehicles are just like on their own. And uh, most important is through whatever means. Okay? So this may be, this may be a UWB technology. This may be 802.11p, for instance, or just some kind of wireless technology. Okay? Now, being connected, connectivity is synonymous to being in range with each other because um, connectivity mostly depends on the way that your radio waves propagate through the environment. As, a, as, a, as, a, as an example, now let's assume that you have a transmitter here, and this transmitter sends out data. <clears throat> and um, the numbers that you can see here is the attenuation that your radio signal experiences. <coughs> this is just an example, as I said. And if, you're, if, the, if the receiver that you use is capable of handling an attenuation of 90 dB, <clears throat> then basically you will be connected within uh, the red area here, okay? Now, if you place the receiver right here behind this gray box, this, this is a building, for instance, an obstacle. If you place the receiver here, <clears throat> then the receiver and the transmitter will not be connected. It's pretty simple, actually. <clears throat> now, let's look at the, at the scenario uh, in which our vehicles move. And these data here has been collected on two highways, <clears throat> which, um, one of which is in, is in Germany, that's the A8 and the A9, this is in the Netherlands. And one thing you can see, on the, on the left plot, you see the, um, the distribution of velocity <clears throat> over the density of vehicles. Like the density of vehicles is the number of vehicles that you have per kilometer in lane. Okay? And here you can see the velocity that these uh, vehicles generally drive. So if the, if the density is quite low, like below 20 um, vehicles per kilometer in lane, then you will basically have a free flow, okay? These vehicles, they, they don't really interact and they drive at, at, the, at the speeds that they desire to. But as soon as the, as the density uh, goes beyond a certain critical point, then what you will see is that the vehicles will, will start to, to synchronize. And uh, finally, the, the speed goes down until you're in, in heavy congestion, until you, you basically have a traffic jam, okay? Now, th this is, this is the, the scenario in which our vehicles will actually um, be. <clears throat> and the question is, um, what is the relation between, between this scenario and the connectivity that our vehicles um, will actually uh, find? So let's start with the velocity profile. <clears throat> and the velocity profile basically is related to how long two vehicles can, uh, can communicate with each other. And I've set up two very, um, two very simple scenarios. <clears throat> this is, a, this is a, a highway. You have a regular lane where vehicles go a little bit slower. You have a fast lane where vehicles go a little bit faster. 
<clears throat> and the plot on the right here uh, shows you that basically um, if, if a vehicle travels on the fast lane and goes by a vehicle going on the regular lane, then you will find <clears throat> like connection times between 10 seconds and up to whatever. Okay? But most, most of the connection times will be around 30 seconds. Now, if you have, if you have oncoming traffic, okay, if you, if you try to communicate with a vehicle that comes on the opposite lane, <clears throat> then what we have here is a connection time that's only around three seconds. Okay? Now, these plots have been computed for a radio range of 100 meters. And isn't it, isn't it interesting how much shorter the, the time is for an oncoming vehicle? I wouldn't have expected it to be so short. Now, the question is, can we do anything about this? Can we make this time a little bit longer? <clears throat> and if we look at the formula for the, for the connection time, we basically have only one degree of freedom, right? We cannot, we cannot change the, the, the distance here between the lanes, and uh, we have no influence on the, on the velocities that these, vehicle, uh, the, that these vehicles drive, but we can change uh, the, the radio range. Like, just put up your, your transmitter, a few notches, and then you get a bigger radio range. And what's, what's the influence of the radio range? Well, <clears throat> with, with, a, with a 50 meter uh, radio range for the, uh, for the oncoming scenario, most connections will be uh, below three seconds. And if you, if you change the radio range to 500 meters, then you will find that you can, uh, that you can manage, that you, that you will get connection times around 15 seconds. Okay, so there's a big influence of the, of the radio range. But I think we will hear about radio ranges later. Okay. <clears throat> well, the next thing is uh, node degree. And node degree, when we speak of connectivity, means the number of neighbors that we will see in a, in a certain scenario. Like, imagine your, your car, and now you want to know how many other cars are there that you can co actually communicate with. Uh, this, is, this is basically just shows you what, how this scenario is set up. <clears throat> and I have plotted this, uh, this prob the, the, connect the connection probability over the traffic density. And remember, around 20 was, uh, was the value when you, have, when you start to, to have congestion on, on a highway. So typically on a highway, we will be around uh, 10 vehicles in, uh, in, in free flow. And uh, with 100 meter radio range, <clears throat> you can see that the probability that you have um, that you have zero other neighbors is around 10 percent, and the probability that you have just one other neighbor is around 25 percent. So this, this, uh, these are numbers that you that you will have to uh, that you will have to work with because um, just a second, let me get to the next slide. <clears throat> one one big problem is is unconnectedness. In, uh, in, in, in V2V networks, especially on highways. If you have a radio range of 50 meters <clears throat> and you're traveling, I don't know, let's say here uh, on, a, on a relatively free highway, the probability that you're not connected is around 30%. And uh, this is assuming that all vehicles on the highway are actually, um, are actually equipped with wireless um, communication devices. So if you, if you assume that only every second vehicle is equipped um, then this probability will be even higher. So the question again here is what can we do? Well, it's, it's plain to see here. We can, again, increase the radio range so that, uh, that we, can, we can get more neighbors, more other cars that we can talk to, <clears throat> and thus decrease the probability that we're not connected. But the problem here is that you have to make a trade-off in the radio range, right? Because if the node degree is low, then the available bandwidth per node will be high. And this, because we have a shared medium, and all the nodes that you have in your, in your neighborhood, in your vicinity, will have to share their bandwidth with you. So if you have a high node degree, so if you increase the radio range, and you have a high node degree, you will get a very low available bandwidth per node. But on the other hand side, you get a long connection duration. So this is, this is basically a trade-off that you have to make. And um, your application designer needs to be aware of that. Like, he, he's, he's really got to tell you, do you want to have a longer connection duration or do you need a high data rate? As an example, like this, this is an example from a, from a project, a system that we actually built. <clears throat> we have these cognitive vehicles and they're equipped with, with uh, certain sensors. We have GPS, obviously, 
We have vision sensors, we have LiDAR sensors. <coughs> and all this, all this uh, sensory information, uh, we shall denote this as, as the knowledge of the vehicle that it has about its environment. And um, it is generally efficient if you, have, if you have a certain knowledge to let everyone in your vicinity participate. So what we do is we broadcast this knowledge to the vehicles in, in the surrounding. We do not broadcast it further, at, at least not necessarily, sometimes we do, but uh, usually we just broadcast it to, to these other vehicles that you have in your vicinity. So um, we need a decent data rate because the sensor data that, that we get, especially from LiDAR sensors, <clears throat> may be pretty rich. And uh, we, want to, uh, we want a low packet loss, obviously, um, to have the information up to date. So this, this is one of the, one of the scenarios that, that we use um, communication uh, for. So the question for us is, how do we share the bandwidth among the vehicles uh, in a changing environment? And this in an equally and fair way. <clears throat> but at the same time, we need to maximize the, inv the individual throughput. Okay? We designed an algorithm um, for that, which works on the basis of knowing um, two hop uh, information of your of your neighborhood. So basically, what you need to know is how many neighbors do your neighbors have, and based on this uh, on this information, um, the algorithm the algorithm uh, computes the percentage of capacity that is available for a certain node, and it does this in a completely decentralized way. So you do not need uh, a global view on your uh, on your network. And what's very nice, so this is going to be published next next month on the Mesh uh, 2010. Um, uh, conference. Um, what we can do now is we can we can compute at every vehicle the percentage uh, of bandwidth that we're allowed to do, and we can feedback this to the application. Okay, so we can, for instance, we can adjust update rates. So if we if we have if we have GPS data that we wish to to share with other, with other vehicles in our vicinity, <clears throat> we can adjust. How often per second is this, is this information broadcasted? And what we also did, we adjusted uh, compression. So we had video pictures that we were transmitting from one card to another, and we adjusted the, the, the compression um, dynamically so to get in a, in a, in a dense environment when you, where you have a lot of neighbors, uh, we reduce the data rate. Um, and uh, what, we also, what we're also doing is if you have a set of applications, um, we define a benefit factor for each uh, for each application, and we can select only those applications that are uh, most beneficial in a, in a certain situation. <clears throat> now, let me just shortly mention the packet loss thing. Well, packet loss is basically a function of the of the offered traffic. So, if you if you have a wireless medium and you uh, and you you load this wireless medium uh, beyond a certain point, you will experience a, a huge a, a huge um, packet loss, and consequently. You will have to have a lot of uh, a lot of retries and get and get a higher um, get a higher delay. So, um, basically, what what we're doing is you can um, you can limit the the total offered traffic with this algorithm that I was talking about, and um, thus limit also the, the the packet loss that you will experience in average. Okay. Um, as I said, we can we can talk about this uh, more in in depth. I have my poster in uh, Thursday's uh, B poster session, so if you're interested, I would be glad to welcome you there, so we can talk about all this stuff in more detail. But there is just uh, three things that I would um, tell those guys that are designing applications. Please keep in mind that wireless communication is inherently unreliable. Okay, it may be that your channel just fades away, and then you don't have any communication left. Right? So if your application is critical, uh, please think about a plan B, just for the case that, uh, that communication fails. So it's, it's, always, it's always a good idea um, to have something um, that you can do in this case. Um, what's very important is please build your application so that you can tolerate packet loss within certain bounds. Okay? We will make sure that the packet loss will not exceed these bounds. Uh, and last thing, bandwidth is a very scarce resource. So please make your application parametrizable <clears throat> uh, at runtime. Think about the scenarios that, that these vehicles will move in, right? Think about that we might have a scenario where we move on a, on a, uh, on a highway. 
um, potentially we have only very few nodes. We have a high data rate available. But we, may, we, we might also be moving in, in, in a very dense urban scenario, for instance, where we have only very, very few, um, a very low uh, data rate available. <clears throat> so is it really necessary, ne necessary to allocate a high, a high data rate for your, for your application all the time? It might be a good idea uh, to have this adjustable. OK, well, that's basically it again. Um, Please come to my poster, and then we can have further discussion. Oh, we can have some discussion. This comes out a little bit dark. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, that's it. Larry.